uh, in America because I believe t- this is time for revival to come. Yeah. I absolutely do. So as a senior pastor, as a bishop, and as an attorney, I have certain core values that I personally have as it relates to this time that we're in. And I realized that I have to make my decisions based on those values. One of those values is very, very important, being a member literally of the city here for born and raised. I recognize that I have to look at the life of those that are unborn, those in the womb. How how are we going to protect those in the womb? And I realize even with black babies in the womb, they've been unprotected. And as a result of that, they've been a direct result of genocide of eugenics as a result. And so if I have to determine who is going to protect babies in the womb, I have to support and I have to endorse President Donald J. Trump. Amen. Welcome back, Warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. So today, I wanted to go over some old clips of Donald Trump visiting Black churches over the years. Now, it's another election year, and you know every politician that's up for election in the presidential side is making the rounds, and they're talking to the people and trying to get as many votes as they can. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Now, let's get into it. As an advocate of religious liberty, I care about religious liberty and religious freedom. And I believe that the next civil rights movement actually is going to be a fight for religious freedom. I believe that the only way that we're going to be able to stand, we have to be religious freedom fighters ourselves. But if I want to protect our First Amendment rights and religious freedom, I have to support and endorse President Donald J. Trump. I also serve as the president of Prison Fellowship under under Chuck Colson. I also was a chairman of Georgia State Board of Pardons and Paroles. I was a commissioner for juvenile justice. I care about criminal justice and prison reform. I've seen the eyes of those that are in prison that are there many times too long and they're not there for rehabilitation. So if I want to see more executive and bipartisan legislative laws, such as the First Step Act, I have to support and endorse Donald J. Trump as president of the United States. I personally attended Howard University undergraduate school and law school. I love the existence of historically black colleges and universities. And I want more opportunities for young people to be able to be world changers. So in order to have billions of dollars that can come and help those HBCUs, I have to support and endorse the re-election of Donald J. Trump. And lastly, if I want to continue to see a drop in unemployment and a rate of Black Americans and to see economic uh, empowerment of the Black community, I have to support and endorse President Donald J. Trump as President of the United States. Lastly, if I want to see true change in our nation, hope for our nation, revival in our nation, among Black and whites together, I have to support and endorse Donald J. Trump. And I just want to say, this is not a church. (laughs) This is the Black Economic Empowerment Forum. This is in 2020, and it's talking about the re-election, and you see it says Trump and Pence. And I just wanted to go over this because the media is always trying to paint Donald Trump as a racist. And I know I do a lot of videos on Trump and Black people, but there's two reasons for that, because I don't think it's fair that Donald, Donald Trump is painted as a racist. It's not fair to him because he's not that. His history does not show that. You know, people are going to fuss and and whine and complain about the ad he took out against the Central Park Five, and they say he was racist for doing that. But that doesn't mean he's racist. He might just think they were guilty, aside from race. And that was no legislation that hurt anybody. That's just an ad. But they'll let Biden, Jim Crow Joe Biden, get away with actual legislation that hurt people. And now we got Kathleen Kamala up, who did horribly as a DA and attorney general 
in California, locking people up, extending their sentences, even framing a man by the name of Jamal True Love, who, you know, sentenced him to, helped him, sentencing him to 50 years for a murder he did not commit. He got sentenced to 50 years for a murder he did not commit. But Black people are okay with overlooking that. And that's actual legislation that affected lives. But when Donald Trump sends out a mean tweet, oh, it's the end of the world. See how hypocritical and pitiful people are? But this again, I know it's not a church, but I am going to have some church clips. But I had to put this one in there because the points that were made are so, so good. Well, I'm a preacher, so no, I'm not going to preach, but if if we was in a good church, I'd say, can I get somebody to give the, the Lord a good praise right now? And one of the things about that moment is we can do that here without being criticized, without being looked at wrong. We can say, let's give God some praise. Well, I am here. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. I'm from a town that uh, I grew up. I'm a son of a preacher. My mother was an accountant for the local university. I was fortunate enough to go to university because she worked for the university. Um, And so my education was free. Thank the Lord. And I wasn't that. uh, I was very fortunate to be able to have good grades. Thank the Lord. And so (laughs) uh, I I am a child who grew up in the steel mill era uh, and jobs left like crazy. And I've watched the city in declination. I've been fortunate enough to be all around the world and to do many things. I've never met. I've met many politicians. I've met many leaders. I've never met nobody like this guy. I think for number one, it's because he's not a politician. What I've learned over the past three to four years is bureaucracy isn't as strong as we thought it was. You can get things done in a short period of time. You can make a difference. You can keep your word. And he gets attacked quite a bit. And I get it. I understand following behind the things he's followed behind and just done. He says what he feels. We mistake that for racism. But I met him, uh, Bruce. We were together. And and I said, let me test this racism. (laughs) I know. I'm black. Really? No, 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 no. And I say that for a reason. I understand being pulled over by police because my car is nice. I understand some of these woes. I am not a compromising black man. I will never compromise my blackness. I'm proud to be a black man. And I will fight for black people as long as I can. Here's the deal. When I met him, he touched me with strong, you know, I'm Donald J. Trump. Uh, He wasn't timid. Then I stood by his daughter, Ivanka, and and it was time to pray. And I say, let me test it again. We were holding hands. She reached out for my hand and she said, let's pray. She was pregnant. I'll never forget it. And she held my hand. I say, a racist man's child would never. So I got several reasons why I'm going to support him. And I'm ready to take whatever heat because it can't be hot enough because the furnace is in my favor. I believe in righteousness and justice. 
I don't believe for fighting for justice alone, there must be righteousness. Amen. Amen. And I don't believe in fighting for righteousness alone, there must be justice. I believe in the economic ability of this man to accomplish economics for all people, but black people as well. He's proven it. I believe that his record is proven. And if we compare it to 47 years of nothingness, I shouldn't say nothingness. I should say destruction. And if I have to prove a history, I have three years of a history that says you got opportunity zones. You have uh, uh, education opportunities. You have prison reform. Uh, I believe in police being uh, reformed and not eliminated. Mm -hmm. I am somebody who believes this is our time and we must take advantage of this moment. So why am I voting for him? Why am I endorsing him? Because I believe that he is going to keep his word. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Mm -hmm. That's what the left don't like. You know, growing up as a child, one of the things I noticed, and I was always a child that was weird as far as I love to read and I thought about things and I just was into things that maybe most kids weren't into. Like I love to read. And one of the things I noticed, I love history. history. And um, one of the things I noticed was that everybody throughout history, I'm talking about way back, that wanted to help Black people. And it might not have had anything to do with Black people, but that's what I was thinking at the time because I was very young. And I remember thinking, hmm, Abraham Lincoln assassinated. He eliminated slavery, abolished slavery, rather. And then I said, huh, Martin Luther King Jr. was fighting for civil rights. He was assassinated. Hmm. And I look at Donald Trump. Of course, this just happened last year when he, all those indictments were coming down. And I say, and God dealt with me personally. And then I thought about it again. Later, I said, hmm, he's trying to help Black people. Is there some correlation or is it just a weird coincidence? I don't know. But the evil powers that be got something against Black people and also against presidents that do not want wars. So that is the reason why Donald Trump is being attacked because he does not belong to fix my hair, sorry. He does not belong to the political machine and he is for the people. And they want to keep doing things the, the wrong way to keep enriching themselves. And he did not even take a salary. So this is not the first time I've heard someone say they believe he will keep his word. He is authentic. He is not going to say what you want to hear. He may not say it politically correct, but he says what he feels. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. It, however, it comes up. That's how it comes out. But the legislation is what is most important. So I got to just say kudos to these men right here. This is the Black Economic Forum some years ago when he was, um, this is the 2020, this is in 2020 with Trump when he was had Pence for his VP. I know people may not feel too good about Pence after what happened, but these men are for Donald Trump and it's in Atlanta. And I was like, wow. Look at all of this that I knew nothing about. The media is keeping this from me. And when Donald Trump first came and said fake news, I did not believe him. I have come to find out that the news actually is fake. Oh my gosh. They want us to think a certain way and everything they put out is a lie. And I'm going to tell you something else. He went to that church in Detroit, Detroit, Michigan with the round table discussion. And Joy Reid, Roland Martin, all these left, klepty, lefty, wacky, woke liberal stations are going to say that, no, that was not true. They only, they had mostly white people. Where are the black people? But the pastor actually came out. Pastor Lorenzo Sewell actually came out and said, no, the media took pictures when Secret Service and the media came in. But after those two groups of people came in, which for some reason happened to be primarily white, the people from the area came in afterwards. And he said 60 to 70% of those people were from the area and black, but the media chose not to show them. So because they wanted to present a certain narrative.
So the media is the racist one. The Democrat Party is the racist one. And yes, I said it and I meant it. Racism says that there is a manifest destiny over your life. And this man and his forefathers have said that he's a product of manifest destiny, that God determined before the foundation of the world that he would become the president of the United States. So I can clearly say, say this to you because this is important to understand that by the fact that he has, by his fruits, which you have all evidenced by the things you are saying, you'll know them by their fruits. The priorities of scripture he has made here as the president of the United States. Remember, it says the promotion comes not from the east nor the west, but the south. God lifts one up and takes another down. God made this man president. And then by the fact that he's targeted the inner cities and all of your evidence that he's doing a great job in reaching the inner cities, it shows the favor of God is on the black community. Mm -hmm. The Bible says not many wise are called, not many noble are called, but I've called the base things of the world to confound the wise. You are a prophetic sign that revival is coming to black America and God is using this man to do it. I got to just say, it's amazing to me that, you see, God doesn't see the way we see. The Bible says um, in, I believe, 1 Samuel chapter 16, if I'm not mistaken, when um, the prophet Samuel was coming to anoint the next king of Israel, he was looking at Jesse's sons and looked at the oldest one who was very tall, and very handsome. And maybe he thought because Saul was tall and handsome that this must be the Lord's anointed. But God told Samuel, do not look at his outward appearance for God does not see as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but I, the Lord, look at the heart. So Donald Trump being a white man, clear as day, he white, is doing more to help, has done, and is doing more to help Black people than Barack Obama did. Facts. Prove me wrong. Okay, I don't remember seeing any legislation for criminal justice reform and opportunity zones and permanent funding for HBCUs. Money was given to HBCUs, but not the permanent funding of it so that you don't even have to ask for money. It's automatically there for you. Okay, he did that and he came up with a platinum plan for Black people. He wants us to have school choice. See, we got to get off of this this right here. We got to get off of this as Black people. I know I got all ethnicities watching me, but there is such a problem in the Black community in America. It needs to be addressed. And I'm here to tell you, and some others have said it, stop looking at what a person looks like. We would rather have a token that doesn't do anything. I would rather have somebody whiter than snow because I don't care about color. Okay, I really don't. I'm just trying to make a point. I would rather have someone whiter than snow who gets the job done for everybody, not just people who look like me, for everybody. Because when we all do better, we all do better. Period. As he entered the Great Faith Ministries Church here, Donald Trump showed off some moves. But whether his movement in the direction of African-Americans lately can do anything for his standing among them is another question. Wayne Jackson is the bishop here. Mr. Trump, a man who wants to say a few words, we're going to allow him. Well, that's so nice. And Bishop Jackson, I want to thank you. Trump's courtship of blacks has been going on for much of the summer, an attempt to show that he cares for all Americans, not just the whites who predominate at his rallies. I am here today to listen to your message, and I hope my presence here will also help your voice to reach new audiences in our country. It's a tough sell. Trump currently is backed by various white supremacist groups, and though he rejects their support, he did once lead the birther campaign against President Obama, questioning his citizenship and his patriotism. I got to pause right there because I just saw a video about this very same thing about, Don, I'm sorry, um, Barack Obama's citizenship. Now, I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt me and hurt my channel, but look at my face. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to say Donald Trump was right. 
That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And, you know, when people say something against someone that is Black, it's automatically assumed that you're racist. No, that person, what I'm saying is actually true. And what Donald J. Trump said, okay, that's, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. Y'all going to have to check me out on Rumble, okay? Chat with me, Linda B. Type it in as one word. Chat with me, Linda B., but type it as one word on Rumble. I got to post it there. It is crazy. It is crazy. I was like, he, Lord have mercy. He was right about that too. <laughs> black voters, especially men. It was the Trump campaign's most direct black voter outreach effort yet, speaking to a racially diverse crowd of about 200, as he claimed that President Biden is, quote, the worst president for black people and argued that the black community is being hurt most by illegal immigration. It's like she's failed on foreign policy. Everything she touched didn't work out. Nothing. Now Hillary Clinton... I invited you here to thank us for what oh, we've done oh, oh, okay. not okay. to give a political speech. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to go back on the thing. Okay. So, okay. Flint's, uh, Flint's pain is a result of so many different failures. And I must say that, that no, I never, never would, never would, never would. And, and frankly, Time Magazine, uh, as you know, they reported this year that the federal government have got a long way to go to bring Flint back. And and I look at the damage done and the damage and the damage can be taken care of. So there you have it. Donald Trump has made numerous visits to black churches. He has and reached out to the black community. But, you know, I really didn't see any of that stuff. You know, I would have thought differently about him. And those first few men, oh my goodness, they came up with great point after great point after great point. So we can all conclude now that Donald Trump is not a racist. And I think I've made that point very clear, not to belabor the point, but I can see that Donald Trump through the years has reached out to Black people. And also it was brought to my attention, and I learned this recently, that Donald Trump financed Jesse Jackson's two runs for president back in the 80s. And he gave money to people, Black people, who could not get loans otherwise and did not have to pay the money back. It's what I heard. And I believe I got that from Judge Joe Brown, if I'm not mistaken. So we can conclude this now. We can wrap this up and tie it up in a nice, pretty bow. He's not racist. But the Democrats and the media are those are your races. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you all so much. Love God, your families, these United States of America. And as they always say, march on warriors.